In today's Farm Talk, we're talking to a Scoutmaster about everything Boy Scouts. Hi, it's Paul Ward here, and welcome to another edition of Farm Talk. I'm very excited today. We are in the middle of a citrus orchard in Ventura County, California, and our guest is Scoutmaster Kent Allen with Troop 225. Scoutmaster Allen, welcome to Farm Talk. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So you've been the Scoutmaster of Troop 225 for... 30 plus. 30 plus years. Yes. And today we had you on Farm Talk because the Scouts were actually picking oranges for a local food pantry. That's correct. It's been a tradition now for about eight to 10 years. Can't remember exactly when we started. The owner of the property's son was a scout when we started and he offered it to us. Instead of doing the food uh, bank thing that the scouts do, we do this instead and then we take fresh oranges to food share. And every year it's, it's a hit. And we picked more this year. We're probably another thousand more oranges than we did last year. Oh, wow. And this is fruit that's probably just going to fall on the ground because there's not, it's not really a moneymaker for the, the property owner. Right. His son lives here now, and he, him and his wife said, uh, we were so nervous about what we were going to do with all this fruit because, I mean, really, one tree is more than a family can use. And he has dozens. And we pretty much, we didn't clean it out, but we did really well. We picked over 4,000 oranges today. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. That, that's a big... And this is just one activity of many, many activities that the scouts do throughout the year. I, if you don't even include our uh, Eagle projects, we do hundreds of hours, uh, and then you multiply that by the number of kids, uh, of community service, of cleaning. We clean up around the churches. Uh, other times we, we've shown up and helped it in parades. We've helped in uh, uh, Camarillo days. We've done all, all of that. And uh, the scouts just volunteer for the service. And the fun. Mm -hmm. Why do boys, and now girls, why do they join Scouts? It, it's often because the parents have some connection with it. Mom or dad were a Scout. But sometimes it's because of, um, it's a mom by herself or a dad by himself with the kids, and they need another outlet or another example of adult leadership. Mm -hmm. And they come in and uh, a Scouts... And I'm not speaking for the scout organization. This is just me. Sure. Okay. But the scouts uh, have a tendency to regiment them in a fun way. Uh, we don't, I mean, we do stand in line. We do stand at attention. We pledge allegiance to the flag. But after that, it's just kids having fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, under guidance, the adults guide the older scouts who are guiding the younger scouts. So they learn a little bit about discipline without it being onerous. Right. Right. And, and you've been at it for a long time, over, over 30 years with 225, and then you were a, a Cub Scout leader even before that. Yes. When you joined, there was actually no hiking in this troop, which you think of Boy Scouts, you think of hiking and backpacking and doing all the outdoorsy activities. That is correct. It was, uh, we followed the Scoutmaster, the Cubmaster that we were with when we were Cubs. We followed him to 225 for my old so older son. And I was surprised because that's what I thought Scouts was about. And I knew a hike that we could go on. And it was the first hike that the troop had been on in years. So we went up to the punch bowls and uh, turned out to be a really great hike. And that was before the punch bowls got washed out probably the third time this season. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, there were trails and ways to go up and down it. And we did. Uh, we had, I don't know, 15 Scouts go on it. And it was me and one other Scout master. Uh, leading up the trail, mm -hmm. and uh, I'll tell you that the I was new to the organization as far as scouts were, although I'd been trained, but you don't know what you're doing. Right. Uh, I'm forcing the kids up the trail, and it was in the evening. We did a night hike so we could get to Johnson Camp. So they're wearing uh, lights on their foreheads, or they're carrying flashlights in the dark? They are, but I discourage them using that, because if they don't if they don't use flashlights, their eyes adjust. Mm. And so they can see what they're doing. And we did, at that time, we had a red cellophane where you had them put around their flashlights so that they it didn't destroy your night vision. Mm. It doesn't always work. These are kids. Right. Okay. right. But, uh, uh, so we're hiking up there, and one of the boys, uh, Matt, uh, was not enjoying himself. In fact, he was telling me he was couldn't make it up the hill. I can't go any farther, Mr. Allen. 
uh, I, I have to stop. And we, you can stop, but we have to keep going. We've got to get down there. There's only me and one other scoutmaster, so we had to stay together. Um, about halfway up the trail, he's going, I'm going to get sick. And I said, well, that's okay. You just try to miss your shoes because, you know, it's just messy. <laughs> he's he's marching up the trail. Right. And uh, we get there. Everything's fine. The kids all throw down and we're sleeping and everything. We make it back. Everything's good. And I don't notice anything about else about Matt. But when we get back, I'm nervous because my first outing, I'm figuring that he's going to tell his parents and then I'm going to get in trouble. Right. This is going to be my first and last experience with scouts. But he, uh, uh, afterwards in the meeting, uh, I always asked after an event, how did everybody do? And because we had lots of events and I'd say, what was your favorite part? And Matt's in the back waving his hand going, yeah, pick me. And then it's okay. And here it is. I'm going to get in trouble. And uh, Matt says, this was the best thing that ever happened to me. I had so much fun. I can't wait to go again. And up there, I'm I'm going, yeah, that's great, Matt. You know, and I'm thinking in the back of my mind, dodged a bullet. Right. And it really doesn't matter what I do to these kids. They're going to love whatever it is we do. Right. So that taught me something as a scoutmaster because I'm learning along with the kids. You know, as long as we're having fun. Sure. Good. Sure. Now, scouts are known for the Eagle Project. What, what exactly is that and why is that so important to so many a scout doing an eagle project means he's reached the end of his career in scouting and this is his last thing because you're you're kind of cut off on your 18th birthday right that's like it's like a hard stop right so if you've ever tried to get a 17 year old to do something you know that that's so we normally try to get the scouts to do their eagle project before they're 16 before the fumes set in Mm -hmm. and that's the perfumes and the gasoline fumes (laughs) okay so we try to get them done so we uh uh, and the Eagle Project is usually all is always a community project, uh, often affiliated with a school or a church, or it could be the government too, mm-hmm. uh, to improve something. Almost all of them have to do with digging, gardening, or something like putting uh, drain lines in. Right. And we've done many around the UMC. Uh, UMC? Uh, United Methodist Church. Oh, we're just our sponsor. Gotcha. Okay. And so we do probably one out of five are there. And uh, we've done all kinds of gardening and digging and French drains and all kinds of stuff. But uh, it's always, it has to be community service. And the main port, the main thing about an Eagle project is the Eagle does not do the work. The Eagle organizes it. He sets it up. He makes the uh, uh, calls, gets the materials, all of that. But he is not putting a shovel in the ground. He's not uh, slopping a paintbrush. He is um, monitoring that everyone else is working and that all the equipment is there. So it's his job to organize it. He's a foreman. He's learning leadership skills, not even really realizing what he's doing, right? How it's going to benefit him down the road when he's exactly. 25 or 35. And that's the whole point of what we've been doing up until then, because by then he's probably been a, a patrol leader, maybe a senior patrol leader. He's held some uh, positions of authority in the troop so that he's learned how to do something, delegate it, and work together as a team. A good leader is also a good follower. So these guys are, uh, they're learning as they go. And they don't really even know that they're learning. Right. Uh, yeah. Right. They're and, having fun. Yeah. And he has to pitch the project, right? Then he has to get approval for the project, lead the project. And then he has to go before a, a board of some sort to do an overview or a recap of what he did, right? Uh, by the time he's done it, by the time he's doing his Eagle Board of Review, he's been through six Boards of review. Six. To go from scout, uh, second class, first class, uh, star, life. Oh, five. Okay. And then Eagle Six. And then Eagle Six. Wow. And uh, it really is, and we look at it this way, and we don't tell them, but later on, they come back and told us, it's like going doing a job interview. So by the time they've done Eagle, they've had six job interviews, and when they go and do a real job interview... It's almost like a light bulb goes off and they go, oh, this is what I've been learning. Right. And so it's it's the parents, which not is just scoutmasters, it's all kinds of parents mm-hmm. uh, in the group have been helping them with this uh, without telling them that's what they're doing. Right. And you must have seen a, an amazing transformation from the time they come in at 11 or 12 and they're, you know, picking their nose to the time they finish their Eagle and they're, they've, they've already been accepted to college. I mean, you must see a huge transformation. Best part of the job, I get to see an 11-year-old turn, 11-year-old kid who's basically not quite human, 
<laughs> he's still learning. Right. Uh, turn into a, a fine young man, leadership, uh, able to carry on conversations, uh, initiate, volunteer, offer opinions. Mm -hmm. My uh, my most cherished memories are with the older scouts as they're starting to become adults, coming back and talking to me. Right. Uh, it's it's really amazing. It's a lot of fun. That's it's a it's a two year every two years the troop kind of turns over. Right. And so you get these new squirrely kids, and the older kids are always saying, uh, "God, look at how squirrely these kids were." Kids are. We were never like that. And yeah, no. Right. You were. Yeah, you were. That, yeah. You were exactly like that. Yeah. And that must be the reason why you've stayed at it so long. It's because of this. Yeah, I go for the humor. Appreciation. You go for the humor. I mean, okay, yeah, I appreciate you. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, if I'm not cracking up at the end of every night, then it, the meeting was successful. It's very good. Teenagers are amazingly funny. Mm -hmm. And they're, I mean, you know, one of the best ones would come and say, yeah, ask me a question before I... Don't know everything, you know, because the teenagers, they know everything and they will tell you that they know everything. Right. So I get to, I get to experience that over and over. Mm -hmm. It's fun. And there's also different ways that scouts can get through the program, right? They don't have to all be hardcore backpackers and hardcore hikers. Good question. I mean, aren't there 200 and something badges that they can choose from? 136. 136. Okay. Now, it changes, but. And what is it? What is a badge and how many badges do they need to kind of... The minimum number of badges to make Eagle are 21 and 12 of them have to be in a certain hiking, swimming, riding, first aid, histories, you know, like community, world history. Some so they've got them. 21 that they have to pick from. Right. But have they to, don't have to do all 21. They have to do 21. Total. They have to do 21 total. But they can choose some of those. Yes. So hiking, they don't have to do hiking. No, they, they can do swimming or biking. Okay, so one of those three. Yeah, they have to. there's some physicalness and there's some things that they have to do, like uh, uh, in the community and in the nation and personal finance mm -hmm. and uh, personal fitness. There's 12 that are core mm -hmm. and that they have to do those. And some of them are, you know, take two months or three months to do. And mm -hmm. amazingly, and you might be surprised by this, Many of them wait until the last minute to finish the three-month merit badges. So they've done all the other ones, and so they might even have 30 merit badges, right? But they're doing personal finance the night before they turn 18. So it's, wow. Yeah, I mean. And it gets harder as you get older because now high school comes and you got the sports and girls and you said the, yeah, the, you know, the fumes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. we, we're pushing them and we're, we're trying to uh, ske help schedule them. Mm -hmm. uh, most of their motivation has to come from in, internally. You can only encourage so much. Sure. And uh, their parents are a big part of it. I mean, we've had scouts that do not have parents that are supporting them. They're just dropping them off. We're not a baby, babysitting service, yeah. but I welcome kids because they need that. Right. They need somewhere to go and to do something. So even when the parents aren't involved, and we really encourage, and we've been lucky with 225, we have an enormous amount of adults that are very supportive. Right. Um such as yourself. Thank you. Um, you said that there was a kid named Gabe whose parents were not involved at all. I mean, yeah. he even had to find a ride home. I mean, they didn't even pick him up, right? right. They didn't drop him off. They didn't They didn't even pick him up at the end. Right. Yeah. Gabe was way self-motivated. And uh, between myself and Bill and uh, Steve. And the other scout leaders. Leaders, right. Mm -hmm. We helped encourage him and supported him because he wanted it and he was told us repeatedly he wanted it and he demonstrated that he wanted it so it wasn't just that yeah i want to do it it was i want to do it. what do i need to do next mm -hmm. and so when they come in and tell us that we're there to help them and support them that's what we do so he was just a rare breed i mean his parents weren't there right he just had some internal motivation and you guys were there to help him help no him. the uh uh most normal parents and uh most parents right are there helping their kids and encouraging them and asking us, well, what does he need to do next and all that? Because the world of scouting, unless you know it, is kind of mysterious. You know, what are ranks? What are badges right. that you've asked all that about? Um, they don't know. And so it's it takes a while for a parent that's coming to kind of clue into it. And so it's, it's fun to have the parents come yeah. and come almost. We don't have an outing that parents are not invited to, that siblings are not invited to. Right. I mean, I encourage, and our troop has always, if we're going to go on a day hike, which you are the leader of many of them, 
we encourage the parents mm -hmm. and the siblings to come if they can make it. Right. I mean, you know, some are old enough, but uh, like today, uh, Britain's uh, younger brother, and I wish I could remember his name, older brother, I'm sorry, came to help pick oranges. Okay. And he's not a scout. Not a scout. He just came. Okay. And he's older than Britain. He's already, he's he's a senior, so he's not going to, because I, I tried to recruit him. Of course. Right. Uh, but he, uh, he said, you know, I'm already this, but he just came to do it. So we get lots of sibling help. Mm -hmm. And that's wonderful. That is that is awesome, and but the, there's such a diversity of choices too. Like like there's uh, opportunities to sell uh, popcorn and 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 cakes and Christmas wreaths, and there's some phenomenal salesmen in this this troupe that don't have to pay for anything because they're such phenomenal salesmen that they have like thousands of dollars in their in their scout accounts. So if they want to go to summer camp, which costs, I don't know, 100 bucks this year, six, $800, right. um, it's essentially free. They they work for it. Yeah, well, they work for it. Not but, free, uh, but yeah. Fundraising is such a part of any organization. Right. <clears throat> and our main enemy, of course, is the Girl Scouts because they have cookies. They have good and, cookies. Yeah. Very good cookies. Right. So, but uh, we sell popcorn. Mm -hmm. And it just so happens that this year, I think we had the number two and number four in the county of popcorn sales. The uh, leadership, Brian, who was the popcorn colonel, phenomenal. I mean, because I hate that part of it. Yeah. No, I'm not, I'm not a fan of selling popcorn. No, I'm not a fan of that. It's in all of that. It's just hard. Although we do Christmas wreaths, and we are the only truth that does Christmas wreaths. Mm -hmm. So we sell those too. And all of this stuff is, if the kid just minimally tries, he can have put $1,000 into his, into his account. Sure. And over the year, we sell that, bunt cakes, uh, candy, uh, but all of it's just, it's so hard on the parents. Yeah, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. So how did you get involved in the first place? I, I understand you were kind of a, a reluctant a reluctant volunteer. It's, if you don't mind, um, as, as a young man, I backpacked a lot, not with the scouts, uh, through the Sierra Club. Mm -hmm. And so as I got older and had kids, I'm wondering, how am I going to introduce my children to this? Um, you know, they're not interested in doing anything with dad, especially. Karen, my wife, uh, said, we're going to do scouting. Cub Scouts is not my favorite part of scouting. It's hard. It's just... Uh, little kids. Little kids. We're not going to places that I would enjoy going to. We're not to. going to Yosemite. You're not going to Death Valley. You're right. just going to the local park. Park. Or at, at best, uh, maybe once in a while we have a two-mile hike. It's a lot of uh, crafty things. Mm -hmm. But she got... Kevin involved in it, my son, and uh, she was doing it, and she kept dragging me into it. Well, by the time he's getting ready to go to Boy Scouts, I'd started to get involved, and so I joined Boy Scouts because this was an opportunity for me to uh, do backpacking with him mm -hmm. and the boys, and he's really great at it now. Um, but uh, So that's what got me in, and then when my second son came up and he wanted to do all this because we would drag him with us. Right. Have to. <laughs> and he would, he would come with us and uh, we would, he wanted to be a scout. So I was the cub master at the same time I was also the assistant scout master at 225. Uh, wow. So, so you were in two, you were the cub scout leader and you were a boy scout leader at the same time. Yes. That is, wow. that is so common in scouts. I mean, mine is little. Last night there was a an award ceremony for the people that do it, and the list of things that these people do, I'm ashamed of myself. They are so, so involved. So involved. I yeah. don't know how to, Yeah, I don't know where to get the time. But you also joined a troop that had no hiking. Right. But you had to, like, invent that. Yeah, I, yeah, that was just, I don't know. But you grew it to, like, 60-something scouts. Right. Uh, under Brett Cleaver, who was our scoutmaster after Chris Smith left, mm -hmm. um, was an eagle. He was one of the best scoutmasters I've ever been with. I learned a ton from him. But he was very good at getting the boys to fall in line, say yes sir, no sir, and all this stuff. And we put on a, a, a obstacle course every year for recruitment. And we grew from 20 to 68 kids. And at that point, it's kind of unwieldy, but right. it was a lot of fun. When we had, like we would help with the uh, Camarillo days, and we say, well, we need, you know, 20 volunteers. 20 volunteers out of 60 kids, 
It's nothing. Right. Easy. Easy. And we would have way more. Um, there were times when we slept, we slept out at the park behind uh, the school, and we would sleep there to guard the uh, the theater. Oh, from see, from theft? Just theabolism. Yeah. And then we would go to, uh, and then we would monitor the thing and p- collect garbage all day. And that was our service thing. So, mm-hmm. and it was, we had a great time. And you have to, to grow that big though, too. You have to recruit from, from uh, Cub Scouts mm-hmm. and Cub Scouts have choices, right? They don't, it's not just two, two, five. They can yeah. choose a whole bunch of different Right. Troops. I think there's a five active troops in our area. And the, uh, as last night at the ceremony, what they're saying is Cub Scouts recruiting is way up this year. Oh, is it? Yes. Maybe which because, is good. Maybe because COVID's over and people are getting back to nature. And... That's part of it. Oh, that's part of it. And they want, they want the socialization too. So we see, that's why in our troop, actually we're going, we're starting to grow too. So it's, it's wonderful. Cub Scouts is really our lifeline. Mm-hmm. So they do a, that's, they do it in their yeoman's work. It's hard. Yeah. It's so it sounds like there's some truth in that, in that saying, oh, he's such a, he's such a boy scout. He's a he's a good person. He's a good person, right? right? That's kind of what you're you're molding. Well, good, again, good it, it's also they use it like you know what a Boy Scout, but uh, positive and negative, right? Yeah. But Boy Scouts are well known, and the three things that I always say that Boy Scouts are known for is one eagle. Mm-hmm. They don't know what an eagle is, but they know that an eagle is important. That's big. The other thing they're known for is first aid, and the third thing that Boy Scouts are also known for is knots. So tying knots, tying knots with rope, with rope. That's I, we spend an inordinate amount of time. I mean, you've seen this when we come in. I've got the boxes of ropes out there, and I'm having the kids tie knots. Yeah, I'm just grateful I can tie my shoes. Right. So, well, um, teenagers don't do that. Okay, they don't tie their shoes. <laughs> and you know, having that eagle badge, I mean, could be tremendous for college applications and all, and in life. Just well, way da- way down the road. Uh, statistics show, and you know, sorry, but uh, that many. Uh, college graduates value their eagle more than they value their degree. Interesting. Um, and that they put that on their resume long after. I mean, when they're 40 years old, I was an Eagle Scout. Mm-hmm. I have to say that both of my sons uh, who eagled out, um, they will be doing something with their friends. And I get the story constantly. Well, how do you know how to do that? I was a Boy Scout. Boy Scouts teach us so many practical hands-on skills. Mm-hmm. That, I mean, used to be part of uh, what shop class taught. I mean, we've had projects where we were putting tools in the kids' hands and we're mentoring them so that, I mean, this is the first time I've ever held a saw. Mm-hmm. How do I make this uh, wrench work? Show me how a power drill works. All of that stuff. And this is the first time, and these guys are 14 or 15 years old. Mm-hmm. So they're learning real life skills. Yeah. They're not learning at home and they're learning at scouts. That's right. I mean, if their dad was a carpenter, then maybe they would. But right. Most likely not. Right. And they, you don't do shop class in schools anymore. Right. For God knows what reason. Right. So when you came in to the troop, you were hoping to get into hiking and then soon realized that there was no hiking. Right. And then you had to kind of create this from scratch. And then all of a sudden you took them to Yosemite, which is about a five hour drive. And then you took them to Death Valley. And so how did that all work out? What was that? And then you organizing that and then, and now you're out with... 20 kids that now you're all of a sudden in charge of. Right. Which is something we worry about, but Mm -hmm. um, happily so. But with my uh, oldest son, we went to Yosemite the first time and we were going to go from Tuolumne Meadows and up over the top of Volga saying it was in July. So we packed like it was for July. Um, I think I had 12 scouts, maybe 15. And it was me and two other adults, uh, one who knew Yosemite. And so we did all the normal things at Yosemite down on the ground, on the valley floor. Then we went up to Tuolumne. Well, we were getting ready to hike out, um, just having to run across a ranger uh, who was on horseback. And he said, do you have your hiking permit? Well, I handed him the paperwork and it turns out this is the paperwork we had to turn in. So I sent two scouts off to go turn it in and we're talking to him. And he said, uh, where are you guys going? Not that he cared really, but. Well, we're going over the top of Volga saying, and he said, you guys got uh, crampons and ice axes? And no. Right. We, we were summer hiking, okay? And so uh, he said, well, you're up about four miles here. You're going to run across a sheet of ice that's going to cross a trail. So you've got to be careful so you don't slip and fall. And I'm looking at this going, 
yeah, this is the time when an adult says no, right? So I said, we're not going up there because we're not ready. I mean, the boys would have done it. And if I didn't know about it, I would have gone up there too. But uh, so I asked him where to go and he did, was reluctant to give us any advice because that's not his job. But he gave us some ideas and we did. And we ended up hiking down Wagon Wheel Falls and a couple other places, uh, which turned out to be a great trip. But just through happenstance, we uh, met up with a family that was traveling in the same place as we were and they had three girls. And these three girls and the five or seven boys who were 14 or 15 kind of got along together. And as a matter of fact, one of the younger scouts, we were coming back from one of the our day hikes, and the older boy said, well, we're going to go uh, meet up with the family. That's fine, because we hadn't heard anything bad. And the younger scout goes, stupid girl. And <laughs> so he was 11. We just said, you'll know later, right? But we get back at the end of the trip, and we're packing up. Uh, after having a really great trip, and a gentleman comes up to me and says, are you the scoutmaster? Yes, I am. Um, well, I'm the father of the three girls that these boys have been talking to. And I'm immediately thinking, I'm in trouble. This guy's going to tell me that these boys did something bad, right? He surprised me. Your boys were such gentlemen, so pleasant to be around, so polite, so helpful. The girls were having an awful time, couldn't stand it until your troop showed up and just, they loved being with you. Thank you very much for making our trip. Of course, you could have knocked me over with a feather at that point. Right. Because I know what teenage boys are like, but when you don't see them, they're actually acting pretty well and being Boy Scouts. Uh, so anyway, it turned out to be just a wonderful memory and they actually kept in touch with the girls for about a year afterwards. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I also find that traveling with scouts, we always uh, line them up. They have to wear their uniforms mm -hmm. while we're traveling. This has worked out so many times because we will go into a McDonald's or something. At least two or three guys, oh, Boy Scouts. I was a Boy Scout. I got up to this rank. People are always telling me what rank they were at. Uh, and the people at the, behind the counter give the boys extra attention in a positive way because they're in uniform and they're, even though they're acting like kids. Right. The, uh, the uniform kind of gives them a, uh, a panache that they... Interesting. Yeah. And when you're out on the trail, it's not free-for-all. It's not, it's not, hey, some guy's in it for himself. You've you got to look out for the other, the other hikers, your, other, your, your fellow scouts, right? If somebody falls behind, you got to go back and, and well, find them. There's two things. First of all, we're not a random bunch of groups, a bunch of guys that just show up to hike on the trail. Right. We are the Boy Scouts. We are together. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, is that we often, my rule is you hike for an hour and you rest for 10 minutes, but you don't rest for 10 minutes and wait for the last guy to come in and then go. The leaders drop their packs and head back and pick up the trail, trail sweep. When everybody arrives, then the 10 minutes start. So we're heading up there and I'm normally towards the back. Okay. Slow. Uh, and the boys are heading back and I'm getting up near the top and the boy who's just in front of me in the trail sweep I can see he's down there can I just wait here Mr. Ella no drop your pack head down there and pick up the trail sweep your job is to arrive at the resting point at the same time why should he get one minute rest and you guys get 15 right everybody comes together we're a team so the so the slowest person gets 10 minutes and the fastest person might get 15 or 20 if that if they didn't come back they're walking in with the trail sweep so gotcha because what happens if he's hurt sure because I'm not looking and He's by himself or he's got one other person with him and somebody's hurt. We go, we make sure everybody's okay every time. And that's another form of leadership training without even knowing what, that you're being trained, right? Right. And you have to watch out for everybody. Yeah. You know, it's not, it's not all for me and not for you. Right. Good, good life skills. I, yeah. The, the good leader is a good follower, like I said. And mm -hmm. uh, oftentimes you'll see a kid that was the senior patrol leader or a patrol leader who's now not. Mm-hmm be very supportive of his patrol leader because he knew how hard it was when he was doing it. So there's a rotation. So you're not, if once you're the patrol leader, it's not like, hey, this is my job and then I'm an eagle and then I graduate. It's like, it's kind of like you you circle through every member of the troop that wants to kind of get that experience. Uh -huh. yeah, every six months we have an election and uh, people move up and move down. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we've had senior patrol leaders that our rule now is two times and that's it. You know, sort of like president. Right. So, you know, uh, and then someone else steps up 
And sometimes the boys are reluctant, but it's so true that once they've done it and they are learning about it, they don't mind doing it a second time in a row. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you need that because the way the troop uh, ages is it'll be uh, young, heavy, and then it'll be older, heavy, and then young, heavy, and then older, heavy as it goes through. It's about a two-year rotation. So as the scouts get older, the troop is you know better run, right? Because the 17-year-olds know what they're doing and they're right. able to lead a meeting and then they hit that 18th birthday and they're out, right? And then all of their, you know, quote unquote peers hit the birthday and then all of a sudden you're left with a bunch of 11 and 12 year olds and it's all, right. it's a totally different troop. Right, and then they grow and watch and hopefully they've, a lot of them have uh, people that have mentored them along. Mm-hmm. So that's interesting. So it always happens in a kind of a cycle. Yes, and that's what's exciting. That's the good part, to watch the kids come in unruly and grow up. And that's why you've been at it so long. Yeah. Do you enjoy it? I enjoy it. Well, Kent Ellen, Scoutmaster Ellen, thank you so much for being our guest on uh, Farm Talk. Well, I appreciate that, Paul. Thank you. having you. Okay. And of course, we want to thank our sponsor, Opus Escrow. And be sure to tune in next time for the next edition of Farm Talk. Farm Talk.